minerals. I'll be talking about the uh, deficiency and the toxicity of all of these vitamins and minerals. The table for the vitamins is right here on the left. The table for the minerals is here on the right. Um, here we have some color differentiation. The water-soluble vitamins are in blue. Um, that's the B and C vitamins. And then the fat-soluble vitamins are in yellow. So that's A, D, E, K. I, I like to say DEAK, D-E-A-K, to help me remember the fat-soluble vitamins. So I'll be talking through these. Um, you can also just study from this table if that's easier, or you can listen to me talk about it. So first, vitamin A. A deficiency in vitamin A causes impaired adaptation to darkness. Um, this, if it becomes severe, can cause night blindness. Um, so that's the classic carrots are good for your eyes because they have a bunch of vitamin A. Um, vitamin A deficiency can also cause dry eyes, um, of the, so dryness of the conjunctiva, dryness of the cornea, um, and a scaly rash with follicular hyperkeratosis. They can also cause these little spots in the bulbar conjunctiva. They're called bitot spots. They're dry gray plaques in the bulbar conjunctiva. Vitamin A has toxicity. If you have too much vitamin A, it can cause irritability, pruritus, bone thickening, high intracranial pressure that can progress to pseudotumor cerebri, and vitamin A is in high levels is a teratogen. Um, a lot of these can be um, correlated to isotretinoin or tretinoin, one of the acne treatments. That is a pretty bad teratogen, so women who take um, isotretinoin need to, be on, uh, need to be on two forms of birth control. So that's vitamin A. And of course, tretinoin helps prevent this kind of follicular hyperkeratosis scaly rash that might predispose you to acne. Okay, enough of vitamin A. Next is vit vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. I put the, uh, the other names for these because oftentimes on exams they'll uh, describe, for instance, vitamin B12 as cobalamin. And you might not recognize cobalamin, but you know what vitamin B12 is, so it's worth knowing these. B1 thiamine, um, this, when deficient, can cause Wernicke encephalopathy. The classic triad for that is altered mental status, ataxia, and ophthalmoplegia. So this will oftentimes be somebody with a long history of alcohol use disorder. Uh, this can progress to Korsakoff syndrome, which is worse, usually includes Wernicke encephalopathy in addition to uh, memory impairment and confabulation. So these people will have poor memory, altered mental status, and um, instead of admitting they don't know something, they might make up uh, the answer or make up a story um, or pretend that they know and have no idea and just say something completely uh, made up. That's confabulation. Thiamine deficiency can also cause dry beriberi and wet beriberi. Dry beriberi is characterized by peripheral neuropathy, which is a sensory and motor neuropathy. Wet beriberi has that same neuropathy in addition to high output heart failure. Next is B2 riboflavin. Now a lot of these kind of have uh, the same symptoms, like a lot of them are going to have this chelitis or chelitis or glossitis, so I've tried to um, bold some of the things that are unique to them or try to group them together. Um, based on what makes them unique, but they're, they're kind of hard to, to, to keep separate. <clears throat> riboflavin can cause seborrheic dermatitis. Um, it can also cause a normal cytic anemia and angular chelitis. Chelitis, uh, also known as chelosis, is this painful cracked um, characteristic at the corner of the mouth. So you essentially get sores. It kind of looks like uh, the Joker from, from Batman, maybe. You get these sores at the corner of your mouth um, that, that can be kind of painful or, or unsightly. Um, they, they might also get stomatitis or glossitis. Stomatitis is like sores on the inside of your mouth, so mucosa um, sores, and glossitis is enlargement of the tongue. Vitamin B3 is niacin. Niacin deficiency is classically associated with these three Ds, pellagra, dermatitis, and diarrhea. Oh, sorry, the three Ds of pellagra, which are dermatitis, uh, diarrhea, and dementia slash delusions. Um, niacin deficiency can also cause glossitis and stomatitis. B6 pyridoxine, this one also causes angular chelitis, stomatitis, glossitis, depression, confusion, irritability, and seizures in infants. Um, an excess of pyridoxine can cause peripheral neuropathy, so that's worth knowing as well. Next, B9 folate, this is one of the classic causes of megaloblastic anemia and neural tube defects in pregnancy, so it's uh, in pretty high concentrations in prenatal vitamins because it helps prevent neural tube defects in pregnancy. So there are 
these two blood tests you could use to differentiate the megaloblastic anemia of folate deficiency and the megaloblastic anemia of B12 deficiency. They're homocystic acid and methylmalonic acid. Maybe I should have put them on this table, but there wasn't room. Um, if both of those are elevated, uh, homocysteine and methylmalonic acid, then that's a B12 deficiency. So B12 deficiency also has megaloblastic anemia. You might also have neurologic symptoms here, um, confusion, paresthesias, ataxia, subacute combined degeneration is all characteristic of B12 deficiency. Folate is usually found in foliage. So that'll be like leafy greens, like spinach. B12 is usually found in uh, like meat products and dairies. So somebody who's a very strict vegan um, can develop B12 deficiency. B12 deficiency actually develops over a long period of time, like years, um, sometimes up to a decade. You do have pretty good um, body stores of B12, whereas folate, um, you can deplenish your, your stores of folate in a matter of like three or four months. Next is vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid. This, uh, when deficient, causes the classic scurvy. This is what pirates get when they, um, when they don't have vitamin C for a long time. They used to actually bring like lemon or limes when they'd go out to sea because they'd be out for months at a time and they wouldn't have any fresh foods for such a long time. Limes and lemons were good because they, they wouldn't rot um, and they do contain vitamin C. Uh, so scurvy looks like uh, it uh, primarily has cutaneous manifestations, but also kind of systemic uh, manifestations. In scurvy, there's corkscrew hairs, perifollicular hemorrhages, impaired wound healing, petechiae, and ecchymoses. On the mucosa, you'll have gingivitis and bleeding. On musculoskeletal, you'll have arthritis and a limp. And kind of constitutional, it can cause depression, malaise, and vasomotor symptoms. Um, vitamin C in excess is pretty rare, but it can just cause abdominal pain, diarrhea. Um, notice also that the fat soluble vitamins are easier to they they are they predispose you to toxicity more because it's harder for the body to clear the fat soluble vitamin than it is for the water soluble vitamins so next is vitamin d um, in vitamin d deficient patients they might have osteomalacia which is poor bone mineralization this will be in adults in children the equivalent problem is rickets in general they'll both have hypocalcemia Vitamin D in excess can cause hypercalcemia, as well as all the um, symptoms associated with hypercalcemia. So that includes bones, um, they'll have bone pain, <clears throat> they can have um, abdominal moans, they can have psychiatric groans, and they can have kidney stones. And in bad cases, this uh, vitamin D toxicity can cause renal um, toxicity. So vitamin D causes hypercalcemia with associated hypercalcemia symptoms and renal toxicity. Vitamin E is next. When deficient, this causes a peripheral neuropathy, um, ataxia, anemia. Uh, when in excess, vitamin E can cause necrotizing enterocolitis in infants. And the last of the vitamins is, hemor or is uh, vitamin K, which can cause hemorrhage or long PT, sorry, long PTT um, when deficient. And when you have too much vitamin K, it can cause hemolysis, which can lead to carnicterus in children. So, that's the vitamins. Next is the minerals, similar table setup. Let's start with chromium. When you're deficient in chromium, you can have an impaired glucose tolerance that can lead to diabetes. Copper is next. When you're deficient in copper, you can have kinked or brittle hair, as well as skin depigmentation and osteoporosis. Copper interestingly causes a, an anemia and an ataxia slash peripheral neuropathy. It's kind of a vitamin B12 picture. Um, so. Those, those are similar. Um, I don't think this is a megaloblastic anemia, though. I would, I would double check that, but I think that's one way to differentiate copper and B12 deficiency. Copper deficiency also causes intellectual disability, and there's a syndrome associated with this. It's called x -link, or it's, it's an x link syndrome called Menke's syndrome um, of copper deficiency. Copper in excess is a well-characterized disease called Wilson's disease. Um, this causes neurologic dysfunction, so you might get a tremor, you might get uh, Parkinsonism from copper deposits in the basal ganglia. You can also have psychoses and cirrhosis and deposits in the eyes. That's the Kaiser Fleischer rings that uh, you might have classically seen a picture. It's copper deposits in the eyes. Fluoride, when you're deficient in fluoride, you can get uh, cavities, dental caries. Um, that's why a lot of countries put fluoride, low, low amounts of fluoride in the tap water. Um, on the other hand, if you have too much fluoride, it can cause fluorosis, which uh, presents with tooth discoloration. 
iodine, when you're deficient in iodine, um, you have hypothyroidism. It's a specific kind of hypothyroidism called cretinism. You can also have a goiter. Too much iodine, on the other hand, causes myxedema. Iron's an important one to know. When you're deficient in iron, you get microcytic anemia and uh, coilinichia, which is spoon-shaped nails, as well as pica, or an appetite for typically non-edible things like ice or uh, paint chips. Too much iron is called hemochromatosis. There are some um, genetic predispositions to hemochromatosis. It usually presents in older men, uh, like in their 50s or 60s, uh, maybe a little younger, but usually 50s. <clears throat> Um, this presents with a number of systemic findings, including hyperpigmentation, arthralgias, chondrocalcinosis, as well as hepatomegaly. Um, the hepatomegaly can lead to cirrhosis and predispose these people to, to hepatocellular carcinoma. They can also get this uh, diabetes, and the diabetes with the hyperpigmentation is often known as bronze diabetes. Excess iron can also cause hypogonadism. I think iron directly inhibits GnRH and hypothyroidism as well. Um, it can also lead to a deposition disease style cardiomyopathy and it interestingly expose or predisposes you to um, infections like listeria, vibrio, and yersinia. So <clears throat> one of the risk factors for vibrial vulnificans is a person having hemochromatosis. Something about the iron must help these organisms grow and spread. Next is manganese. A deficiency in manganese causes irritability, emotional lability, hallucinations, um, and psychoses. There's a syndrome called manganese madness that was pretty common in minors. Um, probably not really acceptable to call it this anymore, but it helps me remember the deficiencies of manganese um, because they are irritability, emotional lability, uh, hallucinations, and psychoses. Next is selenium. A deficiency in selenium causes muscle pain, cardiomyopathy, thyroid dysfunction, and immune dysfunction. On the other hand, too much selenium can cause hair loss and nail damage. Lastly, we have zinc. Zinc has some unique features that zinc can cause baldness, it can cause impaired taste, it can cause slow wound healing. A deficiency in zinc can also cause pustular skin rash around the mouth and extremities, hypogonadism, and impaired wound healing and immune dysfunction as well. Um, so if you're trying to differentiate the selenium deficiency from the zinc deficiency, um, they, bo they both might have thyroid dysfunction and impaired wound healing um, and immune dysfunction, but the impaired taste and the alopecia um, might tell you that it's zinc deficiency. So this was kind of long, but um, a good way to organize the deficiencies and toxicities of vitamins and minerals. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.